The Cincinnati Bengals dropped another close game on Sunday against the Ravens, and it was just more evidence that head coach Zach Taylor is tanking the franchise. Losing is not what we want to do. How's it going today? My name is Jesse McNamer, and welcome to Point of View. Before we get into it today, I just want to say we always appreciate your feedback. I look forward to reading your comments like the one we've got here. Also, be sure to stay tuned to the end of this episode to see if you can guess today's trivia question down below. To today's topic, can the Bengals overcome their 1-4 start despite their head coach? They lost another heartbreaker to the Ravens this weekend and are off to their worst start to a season since 2019, the year before they drafted Joe Burrow. And Burrow did everything he could to get the win on Sunday. He completed nearly 77% of his pass attempts for 392 yards and 5 scores with just one pick. The offense put up 38 points in regulation, and the defense helped keep the turnover battle even. That should have been plenty to get the win at home against the division rival. But in large part due to some late, questionable coaching decisions to say the least, the Ravens hit a walk-off field goal in overtime. The Bengals had a great chance to complete a walk-off of their own on the possession before, as they were on the Ravens' 38-yard line with Burrow, Jamar Chase, and T. Higgins having their way with the defense all game. But instead of staying aggressive like they had all day, the offense ran the ball three straight times to gain two yards and attempt a 53-yard field goal. The snap was botched, Evan McPherson kicked it wide left, and the game was just over a few plays later. And there were mixed reactions from the Cincy players and coaches after the game. Chase and Higgins each said they wished the team was a little more aggressive, while Burrow said he didn't second-guess the play calling. But the real story came from the head coach's remarks, which is never where you want the headlines to come from. Here's what Zach Taylor had to say about the offensive game plan on that final overtime possession. It's just try. We're in field goal. We feel like we're in field goal range, and you know there are there there is. We've thrown the ball in that situation before. Um, we called the pass. Joe actually did a great job getting us out of it, back into a run because the look was not there to throw it. And so there, there was there was good management by him. Um, still got a couple yards out of it, and then we're in a position to win the field goal. And and uh, we thought we'd win it with that. Whatever you say, man. I don't think this is exactly throwing Burrow under the bus, but it does kind of seem that way. While most speculate he's talking about the first play of that drive, and that's where Burrow checked out of a pass play, it doesn't really matter which play it is. The personnel and formation on the field for the Bengals on all three plays didn't suggest they were looking to push the ball. Only one play had a receiver on the outside, so there really wasn't any other option besides to pound the rock. And because of those decisions, the Bengals are now 1-4 with a combined deficit of 15 points in those losses. You could say they're on the cusp of winning all these games, but that means nothing at this point. This is just becoming the Zach Taylor experience, and it's been going on for far longer than just this season. Some of the earliest examples go back to 2021, and specifically, a loss to the 49ers. It was a slightly different circumstance in overtime in that game, as the Bengals needed a touchdown to seal the game instead of a field goal, but Taylor's aggressiveness was called into question after that game as well. The Bengals played conservatively and kept the ball on the ground as they got into field goal range. Taylor was asked the next day if he lost sleep over the decision to run the ball down the stretch. Here's what the head coach had to say. Two things can be true. You can believe in your run game. You can believe in your running back and your offensive line. And uh, you can also put the ball in your quarterback's hands because, you know, in 15 years, we think this guy's we're going to look back and he's going to be a Hall of Fame type quarterback and give him a chance to win us the game. And um, so, yeah, you, you look at really, really one call there on second down. Um, believe in the run. I think that's a great run for us. We got six yards on that to start the half. Um, which would have gotten us first down, but at the same time, our quarterback's really feeling it. You put the ball in his hands and, and you give him a second down and a third down to go convert that and scores the touchdown, and, and uh, maybe you walk off the game with a walk-off touchdown and the game's over. So um, those are just the things, you know, we, we, we are transparent with our guys, and um, we ask a lot of them, and they ask a lot of us, and, and we're all in this thing together. And so, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, that's, that's one that, that you would do a little bit differently. I'm not sure what has changed since he made those comments, but Burrow is still on the same path to the Hall of Fame that he was on then, yet three seasons later, it seems Taylor hasn't let it fully sink in, and it's costing them games in 2024. And if he can't turn it around with all the talent on the team, it's probably going to cost him his job. Since he was hired in 2019, the Bengals are 38-48-1 overall and 10-21 and against divisional opponents. The Super Bowl appearance three years ago, followed by the 12-4 record the season after, made it look like since he was on the right path with Taylor at the helm but it's increasingly looking like that was a flash in the pan, and they may have to pivot sooner than later to preserve the talent on the roster. However, I'm not so confident that that will be the case as long as Mike Brown owns the team. Marvin Lewis coached the Bengals for 16 seasons from 2003 to 2018 and never won a playoff game. That history of complacency with the head coach could prove to be the demise of this era of the Cincinnati Bengals, and that would be a huge shame and waste of some generational football players. Zach Taylor needs to go because this team should not be the total embarrassment that we've seen so far. 
But hey, at least Chase Brown looks like the future of the backfield for the Stripes, and we saw that coming months ago. For more on that, check out this past episode of Point of View. And the moment you've been waiting for, here's the answer to today's trivia question. We appreciate you tuning in. We will see you in the next one.